Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I posted this happy pouch in the Facebook group before Christmas and I promised you a tutorial and I sort of forgot about it, but it popped up in the feed again recently so it reminded me that I needed to get this tutorial done. This is a pretty easy pouch to make and I think you guys are going to enjoy this tutorial. It looks more difficult than it is, don't let it scare you. So let's get started. Here's what you're going to need. I have two pieces of batting cut to nine by eight. I have two pieces of cotton fabric for my lining. This is cut to six by eight. I have several strips of coordinating fabric cut to an inch and a half. I can't tell you how many you're going to need. It just depends on the length of your fabric. I just went through my scraps and I have a bunch of just coordinating fabrics. Some are shorter than others, some are longer, and I just cut them to an inch and a half. Going to need a ruler and a zipper. Your zipper is going to need to be at least as long as your lining fabric. And it's for me, I find it easier to work with it longer than you need. So at least as long as eight inches. So the first thing you're going to do is take one of your batting pieces and you're just going to go through your scraps and find the one that you want to be the center focal point, which for me is going to be this one. You want to line it up from edge to edge diagonally and I am roughly eyeballing it. I don't think it has to be perfect. If you want yours to be perfect, you can fold your fabric in half, find the center, make sure that it's right on, but I just eyeball it. So that's going to be my center focal point. The next thing I need to do is find another piece of fabric and I just try to make sure they're not the same color just for this particular style. That is at least as long as the next strip that will go right beside it. You're going to be overlapping by a quarter of an inch. So it needs to be at least that long. So what you're going to do is take that piece of fabric and flip it over right on top of this one. And then you can pin that down if you want. Take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch along at this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance right along the entire length of your fabric. Once you have that sewn, you can go ahead and cut these tails off. And I only sewed just roughly just beyond the length of the batting. So I can use these strips on the other side or later in the project. So then you're going to open this up and a finger press. You can take it over to the iron if you want. And what I like to do is run another stitch right along this seam line. And then I think I'm going to add another one right in the middle just to give it a little bit more of a quilted look. So I'm going to run right along the seam line with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to run right down the middle of both strips. So it looks something like this. You can see the quilting lines that I added to mine. So the next thing you're going to do is find a strip to fit in the next. And I want to do something a little more contrasting. I'm going to use this yellow one. And again, you're just going to line it up with the pink one. Make sure that it goes off the edge of your batting to fit. So with a quarter inch seam allowance right down that edge and then flip it once you've sewn it and sew your quilting line if you want. So it looks something like that. So you're just going to continue this process and finish off that edge. Once you have this edge finished off, you'll start on this edge and do exactly the same way. You'll put this one down. You're going to turn it around this time when you put it in your sewing machine and you're going to stitch down this edge. Fold them back and just keep going. So I'm going to finish mine and I'll be right back. So when you're done, it should look something like this. You can see I put more quilt lines in some places than others. I don't worry about it. If you want yours to be exactly right or precise, obviously take time to measure. I just kind of eyeball it and I like the way that looks. So you're going to go ahead and repeat the same process for your second piece of batting and meet me back here. I have both of my pieces covered with the scraps. So now we're just going to trim it up. This is all I have left and I'm going to keep those because we're going to use a couple of those pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is just trim up the obvious. 
And we have way more than we need, but I find it easiest to get this part done first. Just trim off the extra fabric. Once you've trimmed both of your pieces of the excess fabric, and again, this is totally wonky. This is not my finished product. We're going to cut this down to six by eight. I gave you extra inch on both the width and the height, just so that we had the extra wiggle room that we could get nice, clean cut. So what I'm going to do is cut this this way and this way. There's my six inches, and then I need eight inches. So I'm gonna trim one edge straight. And I'm lining up the bottom of the ruler with the edge that I just cut. And I'm going to use that as my guide. I'm gonna put the eight inch line right there. I'm gonna line the bottom up with that straight edge. And here is my extra. So there's my six by eight panel. We're going to do the same thing to this one. If for some reason you don't have enough fabric or you can't get yours so that it lines up well, just cut your lining pieces so that they are the exact same size as your finished pieces. So whatever size you made these pieces, your lining pieces should be the same. So I need to cut my lining to six by. The next thing we're going to do is prepare our zipper. So this is on my, in my case, this is six inches by eight inches. So I wanna cut my zipper to one inch shorter than the width. So this is eight, we're gonna cut the zipper to seven. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off this end and before I worry about that end, I'm going to go ahead and prepare a zipper tab to go with it. And I'm just going to use one of these extra fabrics and I'm going to cut this to, it's a, we cut those an inch and a half wide. I'm going to cut it to two inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut another one for the other side. So I'm just using the scraps from my inch and a half straps or strips. So now you're going to take this over to your ironing surface. You're going to fold this in half this way, open it up and fold those edges in and then fold that in half, just like we've done a thousand times in the other videos. So again, you're just going to op open it up and then fold the short ends together. Then open that up, fold the middles to that crease. And then fold that in half so that all your raw edges are on the inside except for the sides. So go ahead and take that over your ironing surface and press those into place. So they should look something like this. Now you're going to take one of those and just sandwich your zipper right in the middle. And you might decide you like one side better than the other. And then take it over to the sewing machine and stitch right along that edge from beginning to end. So it'll look like that. And I'm just going to trim it off, even with the zipper. Okay, so now we want to cut the rest of the zipper down to seven inches. So what I'm going to do is pull the zipper pull so that it's inside where we're going to cut. And I'm going to place it on my cutting mat and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches. I'm going to cut it right there. Go ahead and pull that zipper pull back. You might want to take this over to the sewing machine and just as close to the edge as you can, you can stitch that closed if it helps. Otherwise, just go ahead and take your other tab and you're going to fit those zipper ends right inside, but try to keep them together. And then stitch right along that edge and add the other side of your zipper tab. 
and go ahead and trim that off. Okay, so now you need to decide if you wanna put a little loop on the side for keys or to hang just a dangle, whatever you want. If you want to put a loop on, this is the time to add it. So if you're going to do that, I would take another one of your scraps and I think I'll use this one. And I would cut this to an inch and a half long. Again, this is just leftover of the strips. And this time we're going to do the same thing, except for we're going to fold it in half lengthwise. And then open it up, fold those edges to the center, close it, and then take it over to the sewing machine and stitch that closed and then make a matching stitch on the other long edge. Again, this is totally an optional step, but if you want to, I just got a D ring here and I'm just going to loop my fabric through the D ring. And then I'm going to take one of my pieces. So I'm gonna put it on the piece that I think is going to be the front of my bag. I'm going to go down about an inch and a half from the top. I'm going to place it right there. You can pin it into place if you want. And then take it over to the sewing machine and just tack that down with about an eighth inch seam allowance, just as close to the edge as you can. It's just to hold it in place. So it looks about like that. You wanna make sure that you still have a quarter inch seam allowance to sew through without hitting the ring. So make sure you don't get it too close. And then I'm just gonna trim off those tails just to keep everything neat. Now it's time to add the zipper. So what I like to do is fold this in half and establish the center and then mark it either with a pen, a fabric marker. I'm using a Pilot friction pen. This will erase with an iron and just make a small mark. Take your zipper with the pull closed. We're gonna fold the zipper in half and establish the center mark. And again, just mark that with your pen. Now we're going to line that center mark up with the center mark that we just made. Flip that into place. The next thing that we're going to do is take one of our lining pieces and sandwich that right on the top. And then we're going to make sure that everything is lined up across the top and pin that into place. Make sure you got the zipper, the lining and the outer panel all lined up across the top so that when we sew that, you don't miss one of those layers. And you should have about a half of an inch seam allowance right here where the zipper is not. That's the way it's supposed to be. Once you have it clipped into place, you're going to stitch right down that zipper from edge to edge and secure that into place. So I've sewn that down. So when you open it up, it looks like this. My zipper is sandwiched in between. So we're gonna open it up, push that lining down. We're gonna to top stitch that in a second, but I find it easier to do that at the end. So I'm just going to finger crease it down. Okay, so now we're looking at the front of the bag. We're going to take our other front. If you wanna decide which side you want at the top or the bottom, I'm gonna do mine this way. And then you're going to flip it over, line these edges up and line it up with the top of the zipper. Flip it into place, turn it over. Take your other lining piece face down. Again, lining everything up. And clip that zipper into place. And then you're going to stitch right along that edge. All right, once we have that done, you're just going to lift up your lining or your outer pieces, leave your linings down and lift it up and let the linings fall together. So you have your two lining pieces together and your two outer pieces together. First thing you're going to do is line up the outer fabrics, just like so, and then clip that together. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna line these up so that my outer fabrics are flat and then pull my linings away from that. Clip, and then go ahead and clip the rest of the way around. So we're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. 
and that should clear the edge of that zipper tab. If it doesn't, then you need to use a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. You wanna make sure that you clear that zipper tab. You're going to mark two spots on the lining side bottom, and that's going to be about two and a half inches apart or so. Make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end, but you're going to start at this mark, sew down, all the way up and around, back to this mark, backstitching at the end, leaving this part open so that we can turn it. Again, make sure that zipper is open before you close this or you're going to be ripping your seam open. And like I said, you wanna make sure that you're clearing that zipper tab on the side. So if you need to go a little less than a quarter of an inch on the sides, then go a little less than a quarter of an inch all the way down both of the sides. Once you have that sewn all the way around, you're just going to trim your corners. Make sure you don't cut into your stitching. Reach inside that hole and start turning this right side out. Make sure that you push all of your corners out Check your zipper tab. If you don't have an opening in your zipper tab where you can go all the way through, then you've caught it in the seam. You can leave it that way if it doesn't bother you, but if you want to straighten it out, now's the time to do it. So again, I have an opening right there. Also make sure that you like I use a bone folder or something and push those corners out so that everything looks nice and crisp. All that's left to do is to close up this opening in our lining. So I just like to kind of just tug on it and it naturally falls into place. Your raw edges should be facing the inside of the opening. So I like to give it a little bit of a press just to make sure everything looks nice. And then you're just going to stitch as close to that edge as you can. You can just stitch that opening closed or what I usually do is just stitch from end to end because I think it looks nicer, but that's totally optional and up to you. So that's it. That's the end of this pouch. I think this is really cute. It's a great stash buster and a fun little just general size pouch. You can coordinate your fabrics however you want. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there is a new video. And until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye.